Hello, everyone, and welcome to Your Mind, Your Reality, Your Results, a weekly show where I talk with experts in the matter of mindset and how you can change your mindset in order to have the amazing results that you want. I, if you haven't met me before, my name's Leah Fink. I'm the owner and founder of All Thrive, where we provide amazing workshops that help people raise their self-awareness, develop who they are, have amazing relationships, and we do that all in interactive, fun ways. But I am super excited today to be welcomed by my guest, Carrie Tuttle. Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you for having me, Leah. It's a pleasure to be here. Excellent. Well, let's let's just dive right in. This is a big topic. Want to make sure we have a good amount of time to cover it because it may be something a lot of people are experiencing right now is, is that feeling of burnout, especially with the end of COVID, hopefully, coming up. So do you want to start first by telling us a little bit about yourself and your journey to the topic? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so uh, my journey really started, I, I worked in sales and marketing for, say, 18 years, multiple jobs. Uh, lots of them were long-term jobs, though, where I just felt like my growth kind of stagnated. And I hit a point in my career where I really did start feeling burnt out. And there were, um, I'll talk about some symptoms and things like that. But what it was for me at that moment was lack of meaning in what I was doing. I had lost like that pizzazz and sort of my mojo. That's where I came up with the company name, actually. Um, and so, uh, you know, just really searching for some kind of meaning in my life and what I was doing. And it was, it was um, a bit of a journey downward before I could go upward. And so for that, uh, for me, it included um, a lot of time just doing some self reflection and looking for some support from people around me. Um, but during that time, I actually experienced a huge loss, I lost my husband. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that gave me, you know, some time to reflect on not only that grief process, but then also, what was I doing with my life? And it gave me an opportunity to say, hey, I want to live my life my way and I can design this and how I move forward. So that's kind of how this journey started for me. Yeah. So in, in quite a, a powerful and impactful way. And, and how are you working with it right now? How do you help people with it? Yeah. So one of the, um, well, there's many tools that you can use. But one of the things I ask my coaching clients to do is to start creating a list of things that bring them joy and bring them energy. So when they notice that throughout their day, let's say um, like one of my clients really gets energy from, um, from writing. And so she started journaling on a regular basis. That was just something that helped her to think, uh, sort through her thoughts and putting everything on paper when she then reviewed it later, she noticed some patterns, which was really insightful. And so I do encourage clients to not necessarily journal, that's not for everyone, but to write down what does bring you joy. Yeah. And maybe I jumped too far ahead uh, in yeah. terms of going yeah. into the coaching piece, but let's actually, let's actually maybe go back a second and start with how would those people come to you? How would they know that they're starting to experience burnout or even how you, how would you define burnout to help someone figure this out? Yeah, I think it is really that lack of energy. What um, my clients do notice when, when we identify that there is some burnout happening is generally um, just kind of feeling flat in their emotions. They don't really experience real joy uh, mm -hmm. and they don't necessarily experience anger or, or, resentment at work either they're just kind of flat and kind of going through the motions they might feel sort of like a hamster on a hamster wheel and uh, then it also manifests in their body they might feel achy they'll feel really tired a lot of the time and I cer certainly experienced that myself as well yeah. just hitting that end of the week and saying like thank goodness it's Friday but also hitting the pillow at like eight o'clock and just having nothing left to give. So there's that. Um, also energetically feeling a bit lost, right? Or stuck. Yes. So yeah, I actually did a survey of um, a bunch of people as well. It was sort of a qualitative survey. Um, that asked people the same question, like, what are you experiencing? And they had feelings of like insignificance and mm -hmm being misaligned with their why and what matters to them and their values. Um, so they would go to work every day and do something that didn't necessarily support 
where they wanted to go in their lives and or the values that they held held to be important. Um, they also felt bored, kind of unmotivated at work. So that's common. Mm -hmm. When I, I should put, I uh, apparently my brain is a little fried by the heat today. I usually mention if people want to take advantage of the expertise that's here today, like please do feel free to comment, to ask questions, join us in this discussion, especially if maybe this is something you are personally going through and know someone going through. And do feel free as well, even if you are watching this not live and you want to comment on it and or ask any questions there, we'll make sure to get back to you. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm wondering, I'm curious with that definition, because I, I feel I've often seen burnout maybe be a bit more emotional as well. Do you have people that come through that are still in that kind of elevated emotional stage maybe before they're fully dropping into sheer exhaustion? Yeah, absolutely. It's like there's there's prickly edges on them and everything kind of strikes a nerve. Um, that's definitely part of that emotional piece. And that might be before they hit real burnout where they're totally down in the, in the sort of depths of it. Uh, so being prickly, noticing that you're on edge, um, maybe reacting to people in, in a way that's not your best self showing up. And, uh, so yeah, definitely those symptoms as well. Yeah. And the, the challenge at work, when this comes up at work is that we can, um, maybe derail meetings, right? Uh, we might come up with ideas for solving problems that are very uncreative and not the way we would actually like to pursue solutions. And um, we also might find that, yeah, we're just not the easiest person to work with, not very easy to get along with. Yeah. Totally. So there's the possibility too, that it might not be a self-awareness piece because that can often be the harder ones. You've got your own, everyone has their own blinders on. Oh, yeah. But it could also be potentially someone in the workplace or maybe even the client saying, wow, you seem a little off. You seem a little tired, a little fried. That, that brings it to you. Yeah. In my experience, though, people just don't don't say anything. They'll actually avoid mm -hmm. you. And this is when you say blinders, this is the problem. We don't necessarily have people in our lives who are willing to tell us the truth and what they see. Uh, and so it, it actually hinders our awareness. So when we speak of things like emotional intelligence, um, you know, our own self-awareness helps us to recognize this thing in others. And so when we're in a place where we're a bit in the fog and really can't see how we're showing up or how other people are reacting to us, we then can't manage our relationships because we're not, we're not on a, you know, level playing field where we're, we're speaking the same language or connecting in a meaningful yeah. way. We're just kind of like blocked. There's a brick wall in front of us potentially or between us and others. So that is that is one of the problems because we all seek meaning in the relationships we have at work as well. So it's not just about the what we do. It's about how we do it, who we do with it, do it with, sorry. And uh, all of those aspects are, are really important as well. I mean, you hear people all the time speak about the reason they stayed at their job for so long is because of the relationships they had or the leader they had. And that's what kept them there. So if that piece is broken or missing, then it, it disconnects us from um, both our meaning and, and our relationships. Oh, I mean, I'm, I'm fully on board. There's so many thoughts I have come up with that about, I mean, the work I do is, First of all, helping people be able to give that feedback, which I think is super critical, but it also reminds me of doing work, helping companies, you know, figure out how to support each other through that. And, and if you think of someone in a position of leadership going through burnout, and I have some experience with that myself of being a leader and going through burnout, how it affects your team, because also people leave companies for not having good bosses, which is certainly the last thing anyone wants. So I completely agree with you. So. So on that, knowing it's you know, a serious piece that could be affecting your life, uh, you'd started giving some ideas of how you work with clients. What would you suggest people start doing for themselves if they're suspecting after hearing this that they're on that verge or starting to fall into that place? Yeah, for sure. So I started talking about the list of things that bring you joy, bring you energy. Uh, and then the next thing I suggest, number one, it's not a done list. It's always in process. It's something you can always add to. And the second thing is to take things from that list and do them. Yeah. 
again and again and again so that you continue to give yourself energy. Um, and then after that, one thing, you know, it would, um, it would be wrong of me to continue talking about this without talking about self-care. So it's really important to take care of yourself, take some time out, do things that replenish you um, in a physical way as much as a, a, an emotional or a spiritual way. And so the first thing I always tell people to do is breathe because it doesn't take more time and you don't have to put it on a to-do list. You just have to breathe. And when I say that, I mean deeply. So when we're stressed, we tend to breathe more shallowly. Um, our shorter breaths then deplete our oxygen supply to our brain, to all of our muscles, everything. And so when we breathe deeply, even just three times a day, just stopping and taking five seconds to take a, breath, a deep breath in and then exhaling everything out of your lungs and then repeating that a few times, it changes your demeanor. It changes your energy level. It's incredible how simple it is. Um, and so then along that line, speaking of self-care, certainly energy, you know, taking in, or sorry, exercise, taking in water, um, good nutritious foods, all of these things are incredibly important. Um, and then I guess further to that is then setting boundaries and letting your friends and family know, hey, to, to really function, I need to be able to take 30 minutes and exercise. Mm -hmm. So if you have something you need from me, um, just you'll have to wait for 30 minutes and then I'll be happy to, to talk to you about whatever it is you want want to talk about from me or need from me. So yeah, that's, that's part of it too, is just setting those boundaries and making a commitment to yourself that you're going to do it and keeping that appointment with yourself. If you say you're going to work out, let's say on Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 4 PM, um, don't let other people's priorities pull you away from doing that at that time, or if it's journaling or whatever it is that replenishes your energy. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I love that. And both the pieces of self-care boundaries, I agree with you, they're completely critical. And also that people might not be comfortable with that. That's why I love, that's why my show is about mindset is that can be one of the hardest mindset barriers to get over is people who care so much about their family that they want to put everything in. It's harder to hold a boundary or they have a strong ethic of service. Yeah. And what, what I'm wondering with that is just, just back to your first point there, you know, when I think of times when I am very, low energy or have been in a harder place and certainly other people have described this around depression as well is it so hard to take that first step to say yeah I have this list of things that bring me joy but I want to put energy in start making that commitment do you find that's a challenge with your clients and how would you suggest people maybe get over those first hurdles yeah it's it is it truly is a challenge and especially if you do make a big list it can actually feel a little overwhelming but my point is always to just pick one thing just pick one tiny little thing and do that, whether it's go for a walk. And then you can cheer yourself on and say, yes, I went for a walk. And then, uh, or maybe it's, let's say it's job related and it's, um, you know, speaking up in a meeting because you tend to shy away and you feel like your contribution isn't valued these days and you're insignificant. Well, just prepare for the meeting and ask one question. You don't have to say something smart or anything. Don't put that pressure on yourself. Just ask a question. And that way you are showing your engagement and showing that you're paying attention and that you have ideas by the questions that you ask. Yeah. Mm. No, that's, that's a great way to think about it. Yeah. And it's, it's those tiny, tiny baby steps Yeah. and, and asking, you know, obviously you're a great resource, but there's other resources in people's lives too, that they can say, Hey, do you mind supporting me in this? I would like some help. Yeah, well, and you bring up a great point. Like, so uh, the the kind of final thing I always say is, how are you going to build some accountability into it so that you don't let yourself off the hook? And so, seeking support from friends and family, certainly um, men finding a mentor, uh, having you know mental health professionals who you can draw on, and coaches who can support you and and encourage you and push you along on the things that you said are important to you. That is a, a, another great step. You know, there's lots of resources out there. It's just a matter of like committing to that and saying, yes, I'm important enough that I'm going to do this. Yeah. 
And I, I wonder too, if sometimes people's fears might be a little bit more around, you know, I'm going to go see someone to talk about burnout. They're just going to tell me I need to leave my job, right? That I shouldn't be in this field, that I shouldn't. And part of what I'm hearing from you, and please, I would love you for you to share mm -hmm. is if you move past burnout in a healthy way, is it possible to stay in the same position? And what does that look like? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It's possible. Not everybody has to like, jump over the proverbial cliff to find that meaning that they're looking for. It can simply be attaching it to the things that you enjoy about your job. And so, you know, part of that list of the things that bring you joy certainly should be the qualities that you see in, in the work that you do. And so maybe it is working with the people that you work with. And so what can you do to take steps forward to enhance those relationships? And, and yeah. maybe, you know, often the people around us, we take them for granted. And we think we know them really well. I had a, a job that I was in for eight years and thought I knew my colleagues very well. We felt almost like family. But when I really started to think about it, I knew surface things. So mm -hmm. I started to invest in learning more about the person and like, what do you like outside of work and what's important to you? What are your goals and dreams? And, you know, in helping others to, to, to achieve their dreams, it actually helps me and gave me a lot of energy. It, it was very rewarding. So there's tons of ways to, to find energy. Um, it's just looking for the things that matter to you. Um, conversely, like if you're a really introverted person, perhaps it's not the people at all. It's like the, the creative project that you're working on. And so, you know, just thinking of ways that you can look at your project more, more um, strategically maybe in, and less sort of tactical and then once you find that creativity, that can be really invigorating as well. Yeah, that's a, that's a great suggestion. I certainly agree. It's not always going to be the same joy or, or meaning for everyone. Do, do you sometimes get people too, though, that are in situations that are bad? Like that it's not just maybe their personal view of the energy, but, you know, a, a negative experience. Like you said, they're stuck with that bad boss. And that's really draining them no matter how much they may care for the work and want to invest. They're in some sort of situation that's not serving them. Absolutely. Yeah. So I, you know, it, it always becomes a choice point, right? Like how are you brave enough to have a, a really open and honest conversation with that leader directly, letting them know not only what you need to feel motivated and do your best work, but also um, just calling out the elephant in the room and saying, hey, I noticed there's a lot of friction between us or um, I noticed that you seem really critical of my work these days. You know, how can we fix this? And just looking for solutions and co-creating those solutions. And it's never going to be perfect. Like even if you do have that conversation, there are people who are going to be resistant. And so at some point you may have to either involve others um, you know, other leaders, maybe HR, maybe, you know, um, colleagues who can be an advocate for you. And also, at some point, people do sometimes need to make the decision to leave the, the environment and, and find yeah. other work where they will be better served. But I always tell people, when, if you're going to leave your job, make sure you know what you're leaving to. So it doesn't help us to leave us a bad situation. And then, you know, we, we hear in the media all the time that as humans, we tend to repeat our patterns. And so we look for some of those familiar, even sometimes unhealthy situations. And so if we just jump out of the, you know, out of the pan into the fire, so to speak, then um, that's not serving us either. So it's helpful to look at what is the environment I need to thrive and what qualities are there. So as an example, it might be, I need a lot of autonomy in my job. I need to be able to work on my own for long stretches of time without being in meetings so that I can focus. And, and that might be important to somebody. Yeah. No, definitely. And I, I love that you're putting the meaning part first. Yeah. Right? Find what's important. Find the why. Find the values inherent in all of that. It's so critical. Yeah, it has to be. Um, you know, there's a great book. Uh, Daniel Pink wrote a book about motivation called Drive. And he talks about the idea of mastery, um, autonomy, and purpose being like the three central things that are important for people to um, have to feel motivated in what they're doing. And so I think it's important to really 
self-reflect and understand which of those things, uh, maybe two out of three are important to you to, to do your best work and to have meaning in what you're doing and, and walk away from your work week saying, yes, I had a good week or like that was a nine out of 10 week. Um, and knowing that you, you did a good job because the thing, here's another symptom, actually. Um, the thing I hate to see, or I, it makes me sad to see is when people are doing the countdown, right? They're saying, okay, two more hours until the end of the week <laughs> or, or like thinking of retirement. They're like, okay, I just have to work this job for, I have to grind it out for five more years and then yeah. I can pull it quits. And yeah, I just had this conversation recently with, with someone and it's just, um, there's got to be more, right? I think we can do better. Yeah. I, I love that you mentioned um, from the from the book Drive, those three pieces, because um, if I'm looking from a, a mental health and resilience perspective, yeah. there's a modality called the circle of courage. And they talk about the four core needs and the they, they add belonging, which is the human relationship part that we talked about, but then mastery, independence, and generosity fit very well into mastery, autonomy, and purpose. And so that's yeah. really interesting that that's what he's capitalizing on. And this is also what's, in this case, it's for youth, but that's how resilience is built too with those pieces. So I think that's just such a nice blend of why this is important to us. It's not just our work professional life, but actually even our mental well-being. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you're right. I think um, it's it's easy to get stuck. And this is what I see because I work with a lot of mid-career professionals who have had success and they're hitting this point where they're stuck or they're really searching or like seeking out some meaning in what they're doing, but they have these, we call them golden handcuffs. So they're mm -hmm. making a really good salary. Um, their family has become accustomed to a certain lifestyle and they feel scared to, to try anything new or to leave or to do something that their heart desires, like woodworking or I don't know, right? Like there's so yeah. many other things that we can do as a hobby that it's like, wow, I wish I could spend 40 hours a week doing that because that fills me up and it, it, they're just operating out of fear. And so even if we can't find exactly our hobby in a job or we don't feel like it's going to sustain our lifestyle, <laughs> can we find aspects of meaning in the work that we do so that we aren't depleted by the end of the week? And we don't retire feeling like we've been wrung mm -hmm. out like a wet rag and oh. we've got nothing left to give our families. So that's kind of what drives me to want to help uh, the, the professionals that I work with because I see the vitality inside of them. And I just want to bring mm -hmm. that out. Like it's, it's a better way to live when we can go to the, at the end of the week and be happy to be with our family and, you know, and be an example for them. Yeah. We don't want this for our children, yeah. like for them grinding it out every week. And yeah. Yeah. Well, and that, that brings purpose in a sense to a larger part of your life that you're right. It doesn't always have to be what you do nine to five. It can be how you live your life, the kind of person you want to be, how you want to show up in the world, mm -hmm. not just I am my job. Yeah. Yeah. I know my husband had a, mentor who basically said that he said you know i work in um this in this job because it affords me the ability to do all the things that i love to do outside of work like you know gardening and you know, whatever fishing and things like that, that that bring you joy i mean for me it's skiing i just i live to ski so <laughs> i'm with you yeah <laughs> so um it yeah but, but going to work all day and having um, no meaning doesn't leave you with the energy to do the things you want. So, yeah. 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 You can find some piece of meaning in Absolutely. your work, hopefully. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so in, in terms, I just want to make sure you've kind of got all the, all the pieces that people could be taking home and using, uh, you know, writing down some things that bring them joy and taking tiny steps doing some breathing, you know, it's hugely important, can sound kind of hokey, right? Just do some breathing, but it is super, super critical for your system. Yeah. Uh, seek your support from family and friends, like put that time and energy. And are there any other pieces that you would really want to leave people with that they can be trying out? 
Yeah, still, um, we kind of talked, touched on it a little bit, but it's not so simple is the setting boundaries and keeping the appointments you set with yourself because boundaries, it's easy to say that, but it really takes practice. And uh, some people aren't even sure how to set boundaries. So just setting little things like, what do I need today? I need 30 minutes. Um, I need... I need someone else to do the dishes for me today so that I can have the space to, to maybe journal or to read a book or something that I need to do. So yeah, setting boundaries. Totally. Well, I've, I've been doing workshops on boundaries lately and it's interesting even starting to define what the boundary is like taking that time to think about what, what do I want to do and why is it important to me? Same thing coming from values and, and caring and then, What's likely what other pieces are going to intercede that might try to pull me away from it, Mm -hmm. right? Like that caring about people or whatever it is. So that's, it's a super important point. I'm sorry I glossed over it. (laughs) No, no, I don't think you did, but it was just, uh, it is a meaty topic. We could take a whole session just to talk about boundaries. So definitely. uh, Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot there. Amazing. Uh, Well, do you have any last points that you'd like to make? Any last things to share with our viewers? Oh, I just wish for everyone, you know, you have one life to live. So why not do it your way instead of in other people's definition of what your life should look like? Well, I love it. Uh, if, if you've been inspired by this, if you're wondering and, and have any questions, like I said, feel free to put them in the comments. We're also going to make sure that Carrie's information gets into those comments. And so if you want to contact her to ask questions or connect and see if she might be a great resource for you, Obviously, that would be amazing. But I want to thank you so much for being here today, Carrie. That was just wonderful. And I hopefully a really good reminder for some people about what they might be missing, needing right now. Oh, it was my pleasure, Leah. Thank you. Excellent. Well, thanks, everyone. See you next week.